Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Kyle here. This is the first ever You Know I Got So podcast live on Blab. This is live. So we've got Tom to my right. He's in the dark. I don't know why. And we've got Ed. <laughs> Tom is always in the dark. Because I'm the champ player. You know this. He is the champ. And I'm in a white box. And together we are the You Know I Got So podcast team. You Know I Got So in stereo podcast team. I'm sorry. Yes. Guys, we're in a whole different environment right now. We can see each other's faces. How's everyone doing today? I'm chilling. Now that we took 45 minutes to get this set up, I'm ready to do it. I was just waiting on Ned to get his internet together, dial up. I guess the connection was, uh, it couldn't connect. So, that, it's first all good. Of all, he's acting like it's 1998 and that he just watched Donnell Jones and Camille on, on Video Souls. Step it up, homie. Someone called. Yep. Someone called your house phone and you got booted off. Actually, I need to turn my ringer off because I'm sitting right beside my phone. So that's actually a good thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, this is the first ever podcast, like I said, where we're live. Tom, I believe you're sharing the link on um, on Twitter. So you guys feel free to call in right now. I don't think anyone's here yet, so we might be talking to ourselves. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to have people call in. We're going to listen to what they have to say. Might throw in a little R&B trivia. But uh, let's get started with this, guys. A uh, lot of great things happening in R&B right now. Uh, Tweet just put out the new album. Anyone hear that album yet? Of course, of course. I had a review of it. I thought the album was pretty fantastic. It is kind of the sound you would expect because a lot of people were worried that when kind of an established artist comes back, that they try to change the sound up and make it modern. I mean, it's been 11 years since we've had a Tweet album. That's a whole generation of fans who have switched over. But this is the same old Tweet from 2005, and that's a good thing. I thought the album was good as well. Uh, we did a review on the site, and uh, it's, it's almost like she picked up right where she left off, which I thought was pretty cool. I think her fans will definitely be happy about it. So, me, Ed, your review was almost the same as mine. So, I was oh, happy to see that. Great minds play a great minds. I mean, we both were coming from the same point of view. And I think, I mean, the, the point that they're the same kind of spoke volumes that this was an album that was really strong and had a really good message. And she really had a game plan going into it. Yeah, she definitely did have a game plan. I mean, she worked with the same producers as her debut album. And you could just tell that. It was sort of a continuation of what she already had done, um, you know, and, you know, that Missy Elliott song is pretty cool as well. Kind of surprised that Timbaland produced that. Didn't sound like a Timbaland track to me. No, but I still love it. It still, it wasn't so far off base that it sounded like a Timbaland Empire song. It sounded more like a Timbaland R&B song. So we were good. Yeah. Um, another album that came out recently is Maya's new album, Tom. I know you did a review on that one. What's that one like? I thought it was a, a solid R&B album. You got to remember, Maya's doing this on her own now. Uh, you know, she released it on her own label, Planet Nine. Really had no outside help. So it was impressive that she put together such a solid album with those circumstances. So some just some solid R&B on there. Um, it got some good response online. What do you think, Ed? I thought it was okay. It was uh, – there. Online, you got to kind of be careful because, you know, there are lots of Stanleys and Spaniels all over the Internet. So there were some people hyping it up a little bit more than it should have been. But it was a pretty solid piece of work. I didn't get to officially review it, but I would have easily given it a three or three and a half stars. I thought it was really good. It lacked a standout track. But other than that, I think her fans would be happy. Well, I think it's interesting because you look at Maya's career. She doesn't really have a co-sign. Like, I don't know if she has the support from the industry, which is kind of interesting. She started out in the mid-90s, but she sort of just did this on her own. Um, I don't even know how she was able to put an album together. I think I read on her Instagram that, you know, she funds all her albums based on, you know, her touring and all that stuff. So just pretty cool to see that she was able to put a whole album together on her own. Speaking of putting an album together on their own, uh, Brian McKnight did the same thing with his new album, Better. Uh, that came out 
yesterday as well. We did a review of one for the site too. I thought that was a solid album too. Pretty much what you'd expect from Brian McKnight. Just love songs. And uh, yeah, another solid effort. Uh, Ed, you heard it as well, right? I did. And, uh, and just like the Mayo album, I think it was a solid 3.5 stars. Um, the issue I had with Brian McKnight's album is that it was very diverse in the production, but I think it was a little too diverse. And the problem with that is you had a lot of songs that sounded good, but packaging them together as one whole album, the sounds were kind of all over the place and not a good way. So again, the actual content was strong, but as a package, I don't think it was as solid as it should have been. It was just a little too ambitious to the sounds. I thought he did a good job of, of keeping it diverse, though. I mean, I, I didn't really want to hear him do just all ballads. I mean, he did have some progressive sounds on there. It was a lot of live instrumentation. Overall, the, the theme of the album was constant. It was all about love, you know, and all positive messages. So, you know, like I said, I thought it was solid. Yeah, and my, by what I mean is while it's solid and I don't hurt it when I album a 15 CP ballads, I think that even when you have diverse production, it still has to mesh and flow, and the songs have to flow into each other. And that's something that we kind of lost in the iTunes generation, where you can just pick and choose singles. But from my old school, I want my albums to be very concise and every song to flow into the next. And this song, individually, the songs are great. But when you start packaging them together, they just don't fit seamlessly together. It's like somebody was doing a jigsaw puzzle and they couldn't get the pieces right, so they just started smashing the pieces into each other and be like, oh, okay. Jeez. So, Jeez. good songs, but just not packaged as strong as you should. Let me, guys, let me ask you guys this. Tom and I had talked about it earlier. Um, this this might get us in trouble, but... You know, so <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so Brian McKnight, you know, one of the biggest R&B stars that come out of the 90s. How come his name isn't, you know, like I look at someone like Joe who's continued to stay relevant, continue to do, to do his thing. I think Brian McKnight should be on that same level, but he's, he's not. Like, what went wrong? I don't think anything went wrong. I think what has happened in kind of the current climate is you kind of have to realize that older stars kind of only thrive, well, I'll rephrase how I say that because I don't want to say that they've fallen off because Brian McKnight has not fallen off. But I think that when you have certain fan bases online, they kind of push the stars a little bit more than others. So I think that his fan base just isn't as vocal as a Joe's because Joe has an extremely vocal and passionate fan base online. So that kind of ups him a little bit. Whereas, you know, you got Brian McKnight, very solid, been putting out solid albums since 1992. But his fan base just isn't vocal online. Like to fall back on but the content is great. Someone told me, uh, I asked someone that same question. They told me Brian McKnight is, isn't as cool as Joe. What do you guys think about that? Uh, that is, uh, like, uh, to me, if we're talking cool factor, I think they're on the same level. I don't think that Brian McKnight's out here wearing spiky ball caps and his pants around his knees like um, Robert Kelly on the BET Awards. But that's cool because he doesn't need to do that. But I wouldn't say that he's not as cool as Joe. They have the same cool factor, so to speak. Well, I don't think like that. I mean, more so maybe he meant collaboration-wise because Joe has done hip-hop stuff. B Brian McKnight really hasn't ventured too much into that space. He's well, more I just kept it... I agree with that. Yeah. A lot of artists have become more relevant with their art, with their hip hop collaborations in recent years, and that's something you see a lot more from Joe than you would ever see from Brian McKnight. So I do agree with that to an extent. I still just think oh. that Brian McKnight's fan base is not as vocal online as Joe and Genuine and some of the artists we see. I feel like with Brian McKnight too, he's doing a, almost on such a grassroots level. I mean, you don't see him too often out in the public. He does some shows here and there, but he doesn't do a lot of appearances. He doesn't do a lot of interviews. So it's almost like he, he's doing everything himself, the production, the creation of the album. It's like, I wonder if almost people don't even know this album is out. The single really didn't move on radio for whatever reason. Maybe they didn't invest, but 
maybe people don't even realize he's still doing his thing. I don't know. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. I'm surprised by his album. I had to tell a lot of my readers, hey, Maya had an album out. They're like, Maya still got an album out? But, you know, and unfortunately, a lot of these artists fly too far under the radar these days. Well, I mean, I mean, it's tough out here, man. Um, everyone's trying to make music, but it's, it's impossible to reach everyone. Um, you know, SWV obviously put out an album as well. Uh, Tom, what else do we have going on? We got a big month coming up in uh, March for new albums. We got four pretty good artists releasing albums in March. The, the Maybe the most exciting being uh, Anthony Hamilton. He just recently announced his new album. Mm-hmm. Um what I'm feeling coming out. That was a, a bit of a surprise that was going to be coming this soon. You guys looking forward to that one? Yeah, I think Brian, oh, still on Brian McKnight on the brain, my bad. Um, I think Anthony Hamilton, with one of my favorite albums of the past, I guess, 15 or so years, is his debut. So I have always, when you get a new Anthony Hamilton album, your boy is right there. And he's pretty insistent across the board, too. So I'm excited. We'll see what he has for us this time. Yeah, and the cool thing is, like, when he announced that he was dropping an album, there was just a lot of excitement. And, you know, Anthony Hamilton's a type of artist that, you you know, if you haven't heard from him in a while, him, from him in a while and he's not really that, you know, on social media, you tend to forget about him. But, you know, when he said he was coming back, everyone was excited. So, you know, I'm sure it's going to be a great album as well. And then one of your favorite artists, Kyle, K. Michelle, is coming out with a new album, More Issues Than Vogue. You ready for that one? It's it's interesting to see what the label is doing because I mean obviously we're all so used to the traditional one single push until the album comes out but it just seems like recently they've been putting out like five different singles and I might be exaggerating but um, I mean K Michelle has put out some solid albums and this one will probably be the same um, really interesting to hear the growth of this project um, I think we've gotten some growth I think. She was actually trying to do a country album. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but can't really complain if she's going to do an R&B album. Uh, love the single that she has right now. What is it? Not a little bit. And uh, I've heard the I've heard some of the other songs that she's put out recently, and they seem like solid R&B songs. I'm just interested to see if she's able to take her career to the next level because I think she's close, but she's not quite there. And maybe this is the album that brings her to the top. Next, we've got. Uh, a group that was discovered by Keith Sweat. Yes. Silk is coming back yes. with a new album. And I am too hyped because I don't know if you've heard the single, but the single is so much fun. And I think they're turning back the clock a little bit. And it's exactly what a Silk fans want to hear. I love the single. I We just interviewed them. We told them we liked the single. So I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing this project. And uh, Kyle, you met them uh, last year, was it? No, this was actually, ooh, this was probably two years ago. It's funny because in the interview that I did with them two years ago, they had referenced the single that they just put out, you know, in one of their answers, they referenced that song. So they've been working on this project for a while, and I think they were just trying to figure out how they were going to put it out. And uh, it's finally here, and everyone seems to love the single. And, you know, it, we read an interesting, um, I read an interesting comment on YouTube from the interview that we did with them um, with with silk and Silk just seems like one of those groups you know when you think of the 90s r and group they're they, they're they're there but they're not people don't often mention them as one of the top or not the top but they're not one of the first to come to mind you know you have the west wells the joe the seas the boys to men's jagged edges true hills how come ed how come silk isn't in that conversation yes i've had this conversation pretty recently and the issue is no and it has nothing at all to do with silk's talent the issue is the 90s were just bursting with groups and R&B was just all over the place. A group like Silk, if, if Silk came out today, they would dominate the landscape. But back then, when you had Boys and Men, 112, Jagged Edge, and just this glut of talent, it's easy to get shuffled down to like D-level status, even though they're putting out A-list material. So it's not that they are forgotten or they weren't as big. It's just there were so many big artists then that their sound kind of got a little lost in the show. But I tell you, you turn on the silk, meet me in my bedroom, or some if you, or some freak me, people remember real quick what silk has on. And last but not least, 
Jaheem's coming back, and this is an interesting one. It's his first independent album, seventh album out now. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm a little upset at him. He, he didn't even put out a video for the first single, Back in My Arms. Um, the new album is called Struggle Love. He's got the new single, which is called Struggle Love, out now. But what are you guys expecting from the album? Jaheem tends to give us, like, the same type of – Upgraded 21st century Teddy P soul, and I think we'll get a little bit more of that because that's what we can get from the singles. And John Heem's another one. John Heem's an artist that can deliver a really great album, but then sometimes we have some high albums. Right? And hopefully, he can give us one that's on that top tier because we're ready for that. And uh, the thing about Jaheem, he has a massive fan base. I'm not really sure how he was able to do it, but I mean, even his last album. For R and B standards, it's still pretty well. It sold about fifty-eight thousand. So, mm -hmm. with him going independent, I'm you know not sure how that's going to translate singles-wise. But I mean, he has a solid following, so this might be the right move for him. Well, he he has had a ton of hits. Don't forget. So it sounds like he yeah. he's like some cult following. You know, he's he was a premier artist for a while, and he was yeah, pretty big. So. Yeah. So, what else? Uh, what else is going on in the world of R and B? Ed, we lose Ed. No, what's up? I'm here. Oh, okay. So, what? What else is going on in the world of R and B? We've got new albums coming out. It's been a pretty strong year so far, I'd say. You know who else we got to give a shout out to that put out a project? Our boy John Michael. Yeah. He released a new project tape called Duality today. Have you heard it, Ed? Ed? Yeah. Um, shout out to my boy JM. He sent me that advanced link to um his new project, new mixtape called Duality, and it's pretty good. He's really proud of it, and he's coming off of it really soon after delivering his second LP, Like a Drug, and. Like he was telling me, he was like, I feel like this is a little bit more meaningful to me than his last album because it was just such a personal sound to it. And I won't give away too many of um, the nuggets that he has on the album. Check out his site and you can be able to download that. And I think it's on pretty much every streaming source out there. So check it out there. But it's a really personal project. It's a song called Unapologetic. And I think it's perfect for today's landscape. It talks a lot about black pride and culture that I think would be really, really meaningful to listen. It, there's a topic I want to discuss. I almost forgot. I always like to look at the urban AC radio charts just to see what's doing well with singles or, you know, moving up. So if you guys don't mind, I'd like to go through the top six songs right now on radio. Before I go into this, Ed, do you have any guess? I talked to Kyle about it earlier. And you got to guess what was the top five. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know if I see you, um, what's the trap soul boy? What's his name, Kyle? Um, Tiller. Yes. No, he's nope. on there. <laughs> okay. No, good, good news. news. Not. We're good. We're good. All right, so can I, you want me to read it off? Can yeah. yeah. No, number one, Layla Hathaway, Angel. That's well-deserved, I'd say. Well-deserved, and that's actually a little surprise for me. Oh, good for her. And, and she unseated number two, who had been number one for 16 weeks in a row? Yeah. Tyrese, yeah. Shame. Man, Shame is still on the charts? That song is like a year yeah. old. Yeah. 43 weeks on the charts. Man. Coming in at number three. Coming in at number three, Adele. Hello. I this is urban. This is <laughs> How is this? Uh, this is urban AC. This is R and B. How is Adele charting next to Layla Hathaway? Entirely. Now we have not discussed on the new platform. We have discussed, and you can go to soulandstereo.com right now, and you can go to the commentary section and watch your boy break it down why Adele is not technically an R&B artist, but why her sound still appeals to R&B listeners. And hello is one of those songs that does that. I can't hate on it. The song is hot. I'm hating on it. 
So no, that that's that's bad. <laughs> Ready? Number four. Yeah. Drum roll, please. Number four. The weekend earned it. That song is like four years old. Why is it still on these charts, player? <laughs> yeah. Why is that even on this chart? Why are uh, adult radio stations playing The Weeknd? It's just bad. All right. Well, I'm, a, I'm a big Weeknd fan. I like it. I think that The Weeknd gets a little bit too much flat from people. But that song is garbage. Yeah, you, you tend to like the young music though, so we won't even we won't count that. I'm like the oldest uh, dude here. I'm still rocking silk. What are you talking about? <laughs> Moving on. Number five. This is R and B charts. Kirk Franklin, wanna be happy. Mm. Well, see, before the bluebird <laughs> Kirk Franklin has always been a presence on the R and B charts going on way back. So that's not a surprise either. So again, that's okay. The issue that I have with the five that we've given, besides like the top two, it's not that they're bad songs or they are not R&B songs because there are R&B elements in all of them. But there are a lot of songs out here that would be on this Wait, hold on. We're doing six. I gotta include number six too, okay. just for effect. Go ahead. Hold on. Drake Hotline Bling. <laughs> Real R and B is back. You better say that. <laughs> Don't need a receipt. That song is not up there. I'm so serious. You want me to send the link? I, uh, what do you want me to do? I can I can sit here and validate that it is number six on the charts. Well, let me tell you something about this Drake child. Why are y'all on this hotline? Oh, is, oh, oh, I can't even speak. Where is Esther? No, but, Where is what happened to Jasmine? Is she falling off the charts already? Let it burn. It was like burning well, I, for a long time. Where are these songs? You're bur you're blaming the wrong people. Though. Why, we should be blaming the radio stations who are playing these songs. This is let me remind you, this is adult R and B stations yeah. that cater to grown folks who listen to R and B. Hey, great grown folks can listen to Drake. I, I know, but Drake. you shouldn't have Drake and then Fantasia, Anthony Hamilton, Babyface, Angie Stone. Like, which one of these doesn't fit with the other? Well, my point is that in this format, I don't really see how Hotline Bling fits. I can see the others to an extent, but definitely not Hotline. Like, are we on the um, hip hop rap charts? Okay, throw that up there. You gonna put that Rihanna work song up there next? Is that Urban AC? Stop playing. <laughs> It might, it might be in about two weeks, though. Stay tuned. <laughs> well, there is some good news. Please. Keith Sweat is on here at number nine. Yes. A good luck. So, yeah, the unfortunate thing, though, is it's going to be impossible for, for him to compete with Drake, The Weeknd, Adele, and Tyrese. There's just no way. It's not fair. That's the point I'm trying to make. Good songs are missing out on the top of the charts. And I am not, I'm not arguing that point at all, but I do think that I just question, and we've long questioned some of these programmers and lists that put songs on these charts that don't really fit. Yeah. I mean, you can't beat the power of the dollar. Well, I would go there. I'm not trying to get people in trouble. You know, I always try to be made on these podcasts, and then Tom has to file out. <laughs> you know what I like to see though I just see this here number 19 Ro James permission and we had that on our 2015 countdown yes, and it's just now yes. yeah he's just now getting uh, momentum so that's pretty cool good for him that's a solid song that I would like to see featured more on these charts than Hotline Bling y'all not tired of Hotline Bling I'm tired of Hotline Bling <laughs> it, well, I think the, the thing to recognize too Kyle you could talk about this He's, he just signed to RCA, by Storm Entertainment, and they're sending him to uh, grown R&B charts as opposed to trying to force him into the hip-hop radio. Kyle, how do you feel about that? 
It's, I mean, look at the song right below that. You have the internet girl, and they're on the Urban AC charts too. So it's just really interesting to see what the labels are trying to do. Like, Ed, I don't think the internet, the internet I mean, the sound is Urban AC. I don't think they cater to the Urban AC format, do they? I don't think so, but I think that song does. I think certain songs on the album cater well, and I think this one that caters well. That's actually my favorite song on the album. So I really have no beef with that when it's showing up. Absolutely, but it's just like, are the Urban AC fans going to be checking for their music? And, you know, in, in this day and age, it's not just about the, the music anymore. It's also about the image. So, with, with the internet, I don't know if they follow the far format of Urban AC, but, like, with Bo James, that's interesting because he's, he's a younger artist, yet they're pushing him for Urban AC, which, you know, if that song blows up, and hopefully it does, that might put him in a box, and he might just be stuck in the Urban AC format. Which, you know, not necessarily but I mean, for a younger artist, I don't think they want to be put into that position yet. Well, those charts yeah, but those it, it, have a bad um, reputation of being like the old folks station and the old folks. So, I mean, I understand a little bit of the hesitation, but his sound fit. I think that some of the internet songs actually fit, and that's one of them. I mean, their issue with some of the lyrics don't really fit with the chart, but whatever. If freaking Hotline playing is there, I can put anything Well, there is actually precedent for um, sending Ro James to Urban AC. So, like I mentioned, he's on By Storm, which is also the home of Miguel, who had a huge hit on Urban AC with Adorn. Mm -hmm. um, Molly Music, who was huge on Urban AC when he came out, he's also on the same label. We might have to get Mark Pitts on here for a, on one of these podcasts. I'd love to hear him talk about what his strategy is because that's not typically what you see younger artists going for, the, the more you know, sticking with their grown sound. You see them kind of trying to be younger, which we kind of saw to segue into this. DJ the Chicago Kid kind of tried to do with his latest album. I mean, he, he did the grown thing too. He's just kind of like in the middle. Ed, what do you feel about that? I'm glad you brought that up because that was one album that we, we did review that we didn't get a chance to talk about. And I think that was the downfall of the album. Again, not that the album was bad. I gave it a three and a half. I thought it was solid, but it was kind of the issue I had with Brian McKnight, where he had this older sound that really highlighted the strength of his voice, which is great. But then on the other side, he really catered to younger audiences. And you got that styles clash on the actual album. And that, I think, hurt the overall. It just made it really skip some trend. Yep. I'm actually looking at the urban charts right now, guys. Let me know if this is a good sign or a bad sign, because, you know, the top five songs right now. Wait, um, Kyle, can I, can I just make a comment about, um, about uh, BJ before we move on? Yeah, go ahead. I just think that his sound, he's a, he's, he's, his sound has grown. Like, he caters, he's soulful. Like they say, he's a new the new voice of soul. Like, yeah. But yeah. for someone like him coming out, it's like you have to try to be relevant. Like he likes hip hop. I mean, so it's like which way does he go? It's like you could t you can almost listen and hear him like being indecisive on which like he hasn't quite figured it out yet. That that's my opinion. No, you I mean, guys think that okay to have both sounds because I mean, go back to R. Kelly. He has made his career out of straddling the line, and it's. it's but, you know, we got to remember this is BJ's first, well, his second LP, his first on Motown. But he still has room to grow and to make those sounds cohesive. Because right now, it just sounds like he's singing to two different audiences. And he has to find a way to incorporate hip hop and his soulfulness. And I think it can be done just a little bit more time. Yep. Want to go back to the urban charts now? This is the chart that we don't really pay attention to, but it's kind of interesting right now. I'm looking at the top five. And uh, they're all, they're all sort of R&B songs. I wouldn't call them, you know, full-on traditional R&B songs, but they have a lot of R&B elements to it. So I'm not sure if that means that R&B is coming back or not, but I just want to list out the top five and uh, just want to get your opinion on it. So at number five, we've got Tom's favorite song, Down in the Deep by Yo Gotti. That's not really <laughs> R&B. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the kiddies love it. Ugh. Kiddies, they love it. But no, the top four, I, I, they're sort of R&B, but I just want to get your opinion on it. So, and number four, we have the Jeremiah song, We? I don't actually know that song, but... Me either. You ain't missing on your name. 
You ain't missing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, we have uh, cousin Chris Brown. Yep. Back to sleep. Now that that's a tra- that's a traditional R and B song. That's a traditional song, but because it's cousin Chris, that's how he lands on the chart. But yeah, cool to you. you guys that's put that song really- in our countdown, though. Oh, I'm not saying it's a bad song. It's an okay song. Oh, but yeah, Chris Brown is like he's Chris Brown's automatically like at the top of Urban, no matter right. what. So yeah. Uh, what is this Tory Lane song? Say it. He sampled some old school uh, brownstone song on there. Yeah, shout out to your boy. Um, <laughs> shout out to our boy Barry Bars. That's his jam, right? Oh, now. jeez. <laughs> Barry Bars. And then at number one, we have the Bryson Tiller song. Uh, which, Ed, you talked about it last week. It's sort of an R&B song. No. Sort of. No. No. What? Warren, he actually interviewed Warren Campbell, um, the Grammy award-winning producer, last week, and he said that was an R&B song. No, I think it's an R&B song, but it's not a good R&B song. Oh. <laughs> all so right. With that all said, you got the top four, and they're all sort of R&B songs. Does that mean R&B is going to make a comeback on Urban? Uh, no, because what I want to hear are good R&B songs and not songs that are R&B that are just men. Of the four, the only one that I consider pretty decent is the Chris Brown song. Wow. Even, Chris, right. Brown gets, even Chris Brown gets some props on the podcast. Yes. We got to talk about Sam some love. Speaking of Chris Brown, we got to talk about this tank interview we just did. But first, if there's anyone who's listening in right now and, and – you know, to us live, if you want to call in and, and speak to us, uh, feel free to hit the, the call in button. You could join us and we could yeah. talk about whatever. Yeah. But Wait, um, Tom, before, before you continue, I got a question. How the hell do you have 43 props? How's that wow, happen? how'd that happen? <laughs> Ed, you clicking that button? I think Marley and hooking my boy. <laughs> That's what that is. Here's one for you, Kyle. And here's one for you, Ed. You there you go. Good. Feel better. Um, wait. You got like seven more. Well, whoever's listening in and giving me props, I appreciate it. Yep. Um, and call us. Call in. Talk with, call in and talk with us. We want to yep. hear from you. We love to yep. talk about R&B. Before you get into the tank, uh, I just yeah. gotta bring up Sierra. Sierra. She had a whole tour planned out. It was about to kick off in March. She's decided to cancel the whole thing because she's working on a new album. Does that make any sense <laughs> to you guys? Sierra has, well, as, if you've been paying attention to the um, Twitter and media takeout type stuff, Sierra has been pretty distracted these days with baby mama stuff, so maybe she's got other stuff going on. I mean, she must not care about money, because that's where she's going to make her money since her albums, and this is not a diss, her albums haven't been selling. I mean, let's just look at the numbers. I mean, she is, she is dating someone famous. I mean, maybe he told her to do this. I don't know. Maybe he's like... Here's but, the thing, right? With with touring, that's how you promote your albums. So how are you going to go and promote it if you didn't even promote your last one? I don't know. That's just me. No, I feel you, but I still think that with all this going on with her life, she might not want to bounce at this point and have future throwing lawsuits that or whatever foolishness is going on there. Yeah. I will say one thing. Uh, can I, I'll say one thing though. People always don't take into account female artists have to deal with being a mother sometimes. Well, ma- while male artists, that's not part. Of, like, it doesn't seem like that's part of their their deal. You know what I mean? Like, I used Tamia as an example before. Like Faith, they they just like want to raise a family. Monica, even we've seen at times. Like, we never really consider that sometimes. That but might be part of the equation. You know. No, and I think that's a great point that I bring up all the time. Like, outside of the CDs and MP3s and things that we have, these people have lives and they have families, and 
sometimes they want to step away from the industry garbage to raise a family, and that's cool. I think that's fine. We shouldn't demonize them for that at all. Nope. I'm with you. Uh, Tom, I know you were talking about Tank earlier. We interviewed him. Uh, we asked him about the album, and he admitted that he wanted to turn up on this album. <laughs> it was a tough interview. I mean, I don't want to say I grilled him, but I asked him some, some real questions about the album. And um, he had answers for everything. I mean, he decided he talked about why he wanted to go in that younger lane. And um, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. his future, I guess. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't really have a, an answer. I wasn't surprised by anything he said. I, I mean, I don't know. It, the album has got some good response, the Tank album, but I don't think grown R&B fans are really going to like it. That's just my opinion. I don't know. This grown R&B fan was not a fan, but if that's what he wants to do, cool. have fun, turn it up in the club with Sage the Gemini and all of them. <laughs> you chilling? Listening to Please Don't Go. Oh. <laughs> uh, Speaking of uh, Sage of Gemini, did he just break up with Jordan Sparks? Finally, yes. Again, everybody go to soulandstereo.com. Not now. Wait until we're done. And I have a nice long rant on that. I didn't know they were dating until this came. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, what's sad is I don't. I really don't think many people knew she released an album. Nope, but they know all about Sage of Gemini drama. And she had one of well, the best songs of the year. No, I love that. I still play that song religiously. You do? But, yeah. Great wow. song. Babyface. Wow. Um, but it's just sad. I mean, she's a celebrity, but it's like people just totally missed the album. And for whatever reason. Unfortunately, that's what we live in in 2016, where everybody knows about the drama with the boyfriend and whatever was going on with those two. But the actual content that comes out is good. We miss it. It's a shame. I am so glad we did not have Twitter when Lisa left out of Lopez was going crazy. Can you imagine which food is it? Like, we would even forget there were TLC <laughs> because everybody would just go on Twitter saying what she was doing. Hold on. Side note, TLC or SWV? Personally, SWV, Impact TLC. Hmm. Hmm. That's a tough one. <laughs> I mean, that's a tough one. I mean, impact wise, I mean, I think it's clear that TLC was bigger. Yeah. 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 But, but music wise. From a personal standpoint, like, I just roll with SWV so much more. They're one of my all time favorites. You know, I was recently listening to their their um, third album, uh, release some tension. Yes. Yep. Looking back yes. on the album, it's interesting because it was like very hip hop oriented. It was, I thought it was interesting it, that. It was like every song, like, every song, like every yeah. Song. But again, I love that album. That album was oh, I love that. Mm. I mean, I, I don't know. It's interesting that. It went that direction. I'm just, I was just reflecting on it. Did you have to remember 97, 98? So yeah. hip-hop's influence was strong, and they were just riding that way. So they were just doing what everybody else was doing. But the thing about it is that they were incorporating hip-hop, but still kept the R&B sound. They weren't out here rapping on every song like some other people. Uh, guys, last the last podcast, we were talking about Valentine's Day and uh, the plans that we had for that. Let me just inform everyone. My girl broke up with me before Valentine's Day. <laughs> 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 so before, well, in, instead of getting into a lot of details about this, let me just say, when, you're, when your heart is, Mariah Carey is not the way to go. You should not listen to Mariah Carey. Oof. You, should, you should also not yes. listen to Tanks. Yeah, those are the ones. 
the perfect thing is now, ladies, the man is single. The numbers are coming flying in. The tweets are going to be flying in. The hottest who, who, the hottest who should you listen to uh, when you're heartbroken? That's the question. Yeah. Ed, we're looking at you for answers. Who should? I mean, I listen to Keith Wet just when I wake up. Every day. I, listen, I have to listen to this to brush my teeth. So you know the answer. Oh, goodness. Can I give my answer? I mean, yeah. some, some hardcore hip hop. Like Mob Deep is like the perfect thing to listen to. <laughs> Again, no. You won't have any feelings. You won't have any feelings after listening to that. No, it's all you want to do is stab stuff. I'm cool with that. <laughs> it's like the best <laughs> answer Tom has ever given on the podcast. Yes. That's, That's my advice. <laughs> Come on, guys. Well, let me tell you what I want to this, this was the playlist, and I kid you not. So the first song that I listened to was Tank's Heartbreaker. Bad idea. Well, why would you <laughs> pick that one first? <laughs> I was going through some things, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you might as well just lay in the street and let some cars run over you. Like, you picked up this song to start. <laughs> oh, man. Um, after that, it turned into uh, Mariah Carey's Don't Forget About Us. Man. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Great. Hey, hey, but, but you are really trying to destroy. Hey, things got better though. Uh, next thing was uh, Neo's Go On Girl. So I'm making progress. Okay, okay. And as per Tom's suggestion, when I'm all better, it's You Don't Have to Call by Usher. Okay. And then no, I, gave him, but, I, I gave him a good one. I gave you a good one today though. Which? 112, um, Love You Like I Did. Great song. Oh, I yeah. thought you were going to say it's over now. It's <laughs> over? Come on, man. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. This is Bob Deep. I'm just saying. Bob Deep. Bob Deep. Bob Deep. Bob Deep. Bob Deep. All right. We going into the this or that? Yes. What section are we in? Yeah, we're at the this or that. All right. All right, hold on, Tom, a, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Can, can one of these listeners call right now? We'd love to have you guys here listening. I know there's a couple we, of you guys on here. We need relationship advice. We need uh, R&B advice. Yep. No. We need Keith's what advice? <laughs> Look, I've, I've got that covered. So. Now, Keith, if you want to call in, Phil, where little man at? Like all you do, little G, like, like, come on in, give us a call. <laughs> Little G. Yeah. Good guy. Good guy. All right, Tom. Tim's up. <laughs> All right. It, it, it's an alternative version today. It's not this or that. It's what is, name the worst song by this artist. <laughs> oh, well, I'm getting trouble. Here we go. This will be good. This isn't a diss. Everyone has a worse song. I mean, right? Oh, I know. Yeah. But, you know, some artists like to dwell in their feelings. Every song isn't amazing. Let's just put that out there. There's I some agree. bad songs. All right. First artist, R. Kelly. Can I oh, nominate the entire Black Panties album? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, goodness. <laughs> Who invited this guy? <laughs> I'm with Who that. invited that album? That was the worst <laughs> album I have heard since I have been reviewing albums. He was. No. Guess it. What score did it get? Yes, it is. I gave it a, I think I gave it like a 1.5 or two. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, man. Wait a second. Then what would get a one? Like, what would it take to get a one or a, what about a zero? A zero would have a zero. just cats yelling on track for 45 minutes. So basically, uh, Future's album. <laughs> Turn up. Give him a point five for the production, but okay, yes. Huh. All right, Kyle. Man, what Ed said. No, come on. Come on. You gotta no, fix it. Let's 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 go on to the next. Wait, I can't even think. Of, well, here's the thing, right? When I listen to music, if it sucks, I don't listen to it again. So Ed, he's stumbling here. Stumbling. Ed, he's stumbling. I'm happy to bring the real. So. Hold on, let me can go I, on the Wikipedia. Let me go on Wikipedia. 
Can I put snake in there? Does that count? Yeah. Yeah. Bad. Bad. Much worse stuff than snake. What, like Thoya Thong? Yeah, Thoya Thoya is worse than snake. <laughs> yes. I didn't even say right. it. Like, I remember when it would come on on. Um, what was the thing with Free and AJ? Uh, 106 and Park. I, I wouldn't yeah. even be able to pronounce the song when they would have the little title song. Wow. Wow. All right, next. Next? Yeah. All right, I got to make this good. All right. Tyrese. No. Oh. The song from, I can't think of the name, the title, but it's from the second album and it was the first single and he was driving down the street on his motorcycle. I like them girls? Yes. No. No, that song is good. No song. No. Not good. No, no. song. No. No Damn. song is hot garbage. Damn. Come on, it has the great line. I love them girl with the big old hips. Oh, that is just poetry, player. Poetry. Oh man. Um I do recall there being a song called Off the Heezy by Tyrese. It featured <laughs> That was not a good song. <laughs> what about I Got a Chick featuring R. Kelly and Rick Ross? I got a chick is fine minus those two. Oh, come on. That song was bad. Oh, I'm not saying it's great, but I liked it better than the mo driving down the street with motorcycle song. All right. Wait, Tom, can, can, we, can we revise this and say worst single? Because they all have pretty extensive discographies. All right, fine. Worst, worst single release that we'll, we'll say. Right. Okay. Let's do that, yeah. We're going to go next with – who's a female I can pick out? That would be interesting. Monica. All right. Let me, mm. let me pull up, let me pull up the uh, the Wikipedia. <laughs> Check your Wikipedia, Max. Mm, I'm living Wikipedia player. I'm good. Um, Every time the beat drop? No, Sideline Ho. No, that was a good song. What? That's a good song. Did you even listen to it? The concept of Sideline Ho is... Monica has this knack of being really ghetto but being entertaining, and that's how Sideline Ho is. So I guess I, if anyone else sang that song, it would be ridiculous, but it was funny when she sang it. Yeah. Geez, so that. it's bad, but okay. Yeah. I can't think of a Monica song. I'm, like, really thinking. Well, every time the beat drop. That's probably the closest, because I did not like yeah. that song. Uh, <laughs> then, then tell me y'all, uh, Brandy. Oh, oh but watch Kyle's head explode. We have video. All right. All right, let's, let's, let's go on. Let's go on Wikipedia here. Oh, I thought you were going to say, let's go on to the next one. <laughs> that would <been> funny. <laughs> let's move let's on. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, wait, here we go. Full moon. I'm just kidding. No. Oh, my. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, oh, I got it. It all belongs to me. With Monica. Yes. That counts? That counts. Yes, that's the winner. Yeah. All right, I'll say put it down. Really? Come on. That was so was disappointing. Not, it was disappointing, but it wasn't the worst. I mean, I, I guess for what it's worth, it all, um, the Monica single two was pretty disappointing. That was disappointing. Uh, do, you remember, do you remember all the hype that was around them two collaborating? And then I it was did. like, this is it. <laughs> It was like, oh, we're going to do the boys' mind part two. And then you heard it, and it was like, uh, and it wasn't good. <laughs> it was disappointing and <laughs> so not. Uh, All right, we're going to move on. This is this is too much. Uh, we're, we're tarnishing Brandy way too much. So we're moving tarnishing? On. Yeah. All right. All right, the last one. The last one is Chief Keep Did Sweat. I, uh, what? Uh-oh. It's Keith. Here we go. <laughs> Where'd he go? Yeah. He's gone. He's, <laughs> he's 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 coming back. Is he? I think uh, he left for good. Look here. Look. What you got? <laughs> Everything this man has done is perfection. Perfect. Wow. What, what, what's wow. going on? 
I refuse to answer such libelous questions. Slander hey, what about the podcast. What about the song with Little Mo? That song Great is song. Amazing. Oh. Avant was in the video. For some reason. Yeah. Yeah, where was he in the video? What about the song with Keisha Cole? That song was good. Hmm. Hmm, let's see. Hold on. Um yeah, I don't know. I can't think of anything. Because there is the answer is nothing. Hmm. All right. He's had a lot of flop singles, if that counts for anything. We're not talking about flop singles. We're talking about quality. <laughs> and that man quality. <laughs> All right, moving on. Does that, right. that concludes that that segment? <laughs> got me, yeah. Oh, got me heated. Yep. All right, Let, let's let's wrap this up. Uh, let's get into the food discussion, guys. You know what? I'll be honest with you. I've been starving since the beginning of this podcast. I was trying to get some cereal earlier, but we hopped on this podcast, and yeah, so didn't get a chance to cereal. eat. Cereal. It's dinner yeah, time. Let's, let's talk. Hey, hey, cereal is applicable at any time. I, I'm sure both of you guys have had cereal in the evening as well. I yeah, I, I mean, I'm above my ear. I don't know. I don't even know if we've asked this. I don't even know if we've asked this question before. But what's the best cereal? Have we asked that? I don't know if we have, uh, but I have an answer because the answer is Count Chocula. Every what? October, listen. Count every Chocula. October, I stock up. I have like 18 boxes of Count Chocula, and they last me all year long. No, the red box is the better wow. one. Whatever the hell that's called. You talking about Frankenberry? You don't even know the song yeah, yeah. you're trying to get? Yes, the, the red <laughs> the Frankenberry red kind is the better one. Frankenberry red kind. You don't even know what look. <laughs> get some count chocolate, get your life right. Listen, you can't eat you can't eat chocolate for, for breakfast or dinner, so you gotta go with something that's a little more suitable for a meal. <laughs> But this is coming from the man that eats bland chicken and mayonnaise sandwiches every day. <laughs> mayonnaise? I don't eat mayonnaise. I would never eat mayonnaise. <laughs> well, All right. Can I get my answer? Guys, what about – yeah, go ahead. You first. Man, the thing that came to mind was Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I just had that yesterday. Oh, man. That's, that's delicious. I might get right now. That's a pretty solid pick. But the milk doesn't taste that good. It tastes like medicine when you drink the milk. No, it's, it's true. It's true. You got to eat it dry. You eat it dry? Yeah, of no, course. What do you mean? Yes. What kind of human dry. being are you? I'll tell you another secret. Did you, any of you guys ever do this? Now, this is kind of gross. Eat cereal with your hand. God. Well, yeah. How are you allowed in public? What do you mean? <laughs> Kyle just said he did it. That's that's normal. That's normal. Eat it straight from the box. <laughs> that's normal. You eat dry cereal with your hands. I'm here. In the yes. Place. Yes. <laughs> do you also drink your soup through a straw? Like what? Are, what are y'all doing? That's how we do. Oh. Yep. Wait, hold on. What's the most overrated cereal? If you had to pick one. Most overrated. Honey Smacks. They are so overrated. They are the Drake of cereal. Oh. They are too sweet and make your stomach hurt. I got one. I never. I don't think I've ever had it. I got one. Lucky Charms. You know why? Yeah, never, I'm not, there's never enough marshmallows. marshmallows. They would just put too much of those. Those things that taste like cardboard. See, player, in the 80s, they had a bunch of marshmallows. But something happened, like, in the 90s to the 2000s, word to juvenile, that they started taking the marshmallows out. And it's like all that stuff that tastes like wood. They're like, where are the marshmallows at? <laughs> well, think about this. They don't even put toys in cereal boxes anymore. I you ever know. notice that? No, I noticed that, too. These poor children are growing up in a world where you can't get a toy in your cereal. <laughs> oh man, remember when they used to put computer games in there? Wait, what? Um, computer games? Yeah, they used to put, yeah, you get like a crappy ass computer game in your cereal box. You can tell, I was this, say, you can tell he's like 10 years younger than us, Ed. Well, clearly, because, yeah. or they're doing something in Canada. You get free healthcare and game boards in your cereal because they ain't doing that <laughs> in the United States. 
I was gonna, I was gonna say the most overrated cereal is a uh, Golden Crisp, Sugar Crisp. Is that what it's called? the the bear? Sugar bear. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I had to change my answer from um, Honey Smash to that. Yeah, that cereal is too whack. Wait, what about pops? It's too sweet. Pops is pretty nasty too. You mean corn pops? Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean everybody knows that's nasty. Like, don't eat that. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we all agree. Eating your corn pops and listening to Sam Smith. Like, go somewhere. <laughs> what? <laughs> all right, guys. So uh, let's wrap up this podcast. I'm hoping this thing all recorded. Uh, and then to the two people that actually listened in, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we're going to be better prepared next time for this. And, uh, again, I hope this recorded or else we're going to have to redo this. And uh, I don't really feel like doing that. <laughs> Ed, what's going on in Soul and Stereo? Well, as we mentioned earlier, we had a bunch of albums that we've reviewed. So if you have missed, missed those, stop by soulandstereo.com and you can see reviews of Tweet, BJ the Chicago Kid. We talk a little bit about Sage the Gemini and Jordan Sparks, um, J, uh, John Michael's new album. So lots of content in the past week or so. So stop by and see what's up. What are we doing, Kyle? Um, a whole lot of nothing, actually. I'm just what? Uh, we just did a great interview with. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we actually did a great interview with Warren Campbell, uh, Grammy Award-winning producer, and he's one of those producers. He gets it. He gets the music industry. He gets what's wrong with it right now. He uh, seems to have an understanding of what needs to be done. Um, so that that interview is going to be published next week. We're actually going to try to get him on a podcast as well because, like I said, he gets it, and that he's just like cool. one of us. So we're going to get that going on. Tom, I think we got a couple of interviews lined up, don't we? We're interviewing Jermaine Dupri this coming week alongside uh, Miss Mulatto, actually. Ed, do you know who that is? I know who Jermaine Dupri is. <laughs> he had the rap game show, and that's who he picked as his winner. Oh, uh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. I've heard that name now, but I'm not familiar. So, I didn't watch the show. And then, so what's gonna happen? You're gonna ask. You're gonna ask one question about her, and then just nine questions about Usher. Come on, I'm calm down. And then, <laughs> and then Kyle will be interviewing Tammy Lucas. You know who that is, Ed? You know how they like me on Tammy Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's the uh, she's the chick, she's the chick that uh, sings in uh, Super Thug. By the Maria chick Ray. that sings in Super Thug. The chick that sings in Super Thug. Now that he, has. Since you go viral, talk to me after this so we can hype that up a little bit because that will he taught for real. She taught for how to write. That's the main part. Yeah. Interesting. Wait, what song. other uh, what N E R D song is she on? Um Was it Lap Dance? I can't remember. No, I thought no. Lap Dance was I thought Vita was doing singing and lap dance. I don't know. No, it, it was um uh, hold on, game it. Back to Wikipedia. Hold on. <clears throat> oh, uh, Tammy Lucas is on a uh, Philly's Most Wanted song too. Philly's Most Wanted, Tom's favorite group. <laughs> <laughs> you say me? Yes, you. No, Mob Deep is my favorite group. <laughs> it gets me fired up. I did like Philly's Most Wanted though. I bought their first album. It was okay. It was okay. Hold on, I'm still trying to find this answer. All right, you got about five seconds. And the uh, results are in. And I lost it. Whatever oh, track right, nine well, is. Gonna, whatever track nine is. Oh, uh, Baby Doll. I don't even remember the worst song. how they go. That's the worst <laughs> song on the album. <laughs> don't ask well, anyway. that. We're going to wrap up this podcast. Uh, like I said, hopefully this recorded. And if it is recorded, we're going to post it live on YouTube and all the other podcast things that we do. Uh, but until next time, we're going to call it a day. And, uh, you know, stay tuned for more to come, more R&B on Soul and Stereo. And, you know, I got so this is Kyle signing out with Tom and Ed. And we'll see you guys soon. All right. Peace. Peace.